Hey y'all, welcome back to Tobacco Leaf Legacies. I'm Cheryl. This video, we're doing another brew and review. Got your brew ready? Okay, so the book for today. Now, this is going to be kind of hard to see because this is gold and shiny and just wants to reflect the light something awful. This is The Shell Seekers by Rosamund Pilcher. You can see that. This was a really good book, y'all. And apparently it's a very popular book and I did not know that. This is the 10th anniversary uh, edition. Have you read it? Let's see. The synopsis of this, and I'm going to read what's on the back here because that, that's a better synopsis, honestly, than I can come up with. At the end of a long and useful life, Penelope Keeling's prized possession is the shell seekers painted by her father and symbolizing her unconventional life from bohemian childhood to wartime romance. When her grown children learn their grandfather's work is now worth a fortune, each has an idea as to what Penelope should do. But as she recalls the passions, tragedies, and secrets of her life, she knows there is only one answer and it lies in her heart. Okay, so let's get into my overall opinion. And as usual, you know me, I have my notes. Okay, so my overall opinion, it, I think it was an amazingly realistic story. And I mean that as the highest compliment possible. Penelope, the main character, is very family oriented. She treasures her family belongings, mainly her father's art, and also treasures her past and her upbringing. No, I don't identify with that at all. <laughs> she has three grown children. One is a headstrong, successful businesswoman, while the other two are a little greedy, a little selfish, and they are more interested in financial gain than anything else. There are a few other main characters who add a lot of love and a lot of heart to the story. Rosamund has crafted a scenario that we all know too well. Last surviving parent close to passing with children ready to fight each other about their inheritance. I don't know how many times in the, just the last number of years since my parents have passed where I have chatted with other people and they have told me about scenarios that have happened in their life when their parents passed and when they started arguing or fighting with their siblings and everything and ooh, why do why do we do this why are we hateful like this when we should be coming together and supporting each other but anyway i guarantee you've met a nancy and a noel those are her greedy children in your life we learn about Penelope's upbringing, the wartime struggle to survive, the memories and places that she held close to her heart. You feel like she was a close friend by the end. The, the book is very, and it, maybe this sounds kind of odd to describe it this way, but it really is very warm and comforting. You, you just feel very comfortable with the book, with the storyline and with the characters. While there are many British terms and references, it will not stop you from loving this book. Rosamund is talented at painting the exact picture that she wants you to see. Pun intended. <laughs> because The Shell Seekers is a painting. Okay, so let's get into the questions. What do you think about the cover? Well, to be honest, I don't exactly care for it. Based on some of the landscapes that are described in the book, I feel like a much better, more appropriate cover could have been designed. As I said, this one is an anniversary edition and I think there are older versions available that have a beach scene. This one's just flowers and it's got this gold, which is really hard for the camera to see. If you look this book up on Google, you will see other versions where they do have like a little beach scene on the front of it. And that's really what I feel like should be on um, 
on the cover of this. And I almost feel like too, it would be a little more eye catching. I mean, sure the gold catches your attention, but you know, a pretty beach scene. I mean, all of us would be drawn to that. Be like, Ooh, that's pretty. What's this about? So I don't love this cover, but there have been better covers in the past. Is the title an accurate representation of the story? Yeah, the title is 100% accurate because The Shell Seekers is the name of the painting that Penelope's dad did, and it carries a pretty prominent role throughout the book. Now, as a side note, just out of curiosity on my part, there is an actual painting by a woman named Johnny Leladol, hopefully I'm saying that right, called The Shell Seekers. While the book was written in 1987, I think the painting was done before that. So I don't think there's any relation between the two, but it is really pretty if you want to look that up as well. How original or unique was the story? Actually, it's not unique at all uh, as far as a story. Um, the basic storyline is all too well known when children start squabbling over their inheritance. I mean, we hear that all the time. There is a vein of familiarity that courses through the entire book because of that. Doesn't mean it's not good, and I've already said that it is a great story and it's written exceptionally well. And I think the fact that it isn't unique, the fact that it is kindly, sadly typical means that more people will enjoy it because more people can identify it. At some point in your life, you will have lost a parent and you will have to go through that process of losing the parent and, you know, doing the funeral and then having to go through belongings and go over the will and figure that stuff out. So anyone you know especially like i said it, it will at some point in your life it, it will apply to everybody what did you like best and least what did i like best and least okay what i liked best was the fact that penelope mostly lived on her own terms that is something else that i identify with she made choices that were right for her and was not bothered if someone was upset by it. Now, I don't mean that she, I don't want to say the B word here. Uh, it's not that she was mean or rude or unkind or anything like that, but she lived her life mostly for herself and she made choices that were appropriate for her. And she did not sacrifice uh, very much of herself and and I understand that I get that you're trying to live the best life that you can and so you're making the best decisions for yourself that you can and I always because she was so true to herself that's just something that's a trait that I always admire what I liked least obviously I did not like the older greedy children I can't call them children. They're, they're grown adults, but the way that she described the way that the author described them, like I said, we've all met people like that where they just seemed like they were a lot less concerned about their mom. The fact that she was kind of in her last few, you know, weeks or months or whatever the time period was, they seemed less concerned about that and just more concerned about money. And I mean, that's just, that's appalling. You know, that was awful. So definitely didn't like them. They caused, as I said here, they caused many eye rolls <laughs> when I was reading. Something else I didn't like though, at the end, obviously I'm not really giving anything away here. Penelope passes, okay, by the end of the book. You, as you're reading, you know that's coming. Okay, that's, that's part of the story. So at the end, when the, I'll call it non-greedy daughter, uh, the businesswoman daughter, when she was going through her mother's things, she didn't keep anything for herself. 
I mean, the author didn't specify that she kept anything. No knickknack, no piece of clothing, nothing. And to be honest, that actually kind of hurt me a little bit. That daughter had the best relationship, you know, the best relationship than the other two did, I guess. I mean, even then it wasn't perfect, but better. And honestly, I thought it was a pretty heartless thing not to keep anything. I mean, who does that? It's your mother. I mean, I guess if you had a, a truly awful, truly abusive, I mean, tr truly bad, then okay, I guess I can see that. But they did not have that kind of relationship in this book. And for her to go through and just, you know, toss and give to whatever the equivalent of, of Goodwill was then. And I think she gave something to, there's a lady that kind of is helping out and, and stuff, but like, you don't keep one thing, something, a piece of clothing or whatever, like, I didn't like that at all. I think, I think I kind of, I think I took that a little personally. What feelings did the book evoke? Oh, the book definitely evoked some feelings for sure. It brought up memories of dealing with an ailing parent, funerals, handling wills, that whole bit. I'm not but so far removed from that in the last 10 years, two times. So I was, I was definitely feeling that. It also made me grateful, like for the zillionth time, that my brother and I did not fight during this process. We haven't fought over anything. And, and I have said that repeatedly, and I will continue to say how grateful I am for that. We handled, have handled, are handling still, everything as a team. Yes, there, there have been so many lows. I, I, I can't even begin to explain. So many lows um, that we've had to deal with, but we have not fought and we have not squabbled over stuff. And, and I think that given the circumstances, it, that's actually unusual. Like I said, I don't know of, of all the people that I've talked to the last number of years that have told me the horrific stories about siblings fighting and all that. I don't think anybody's told me about a story where they actually got along with somebody and worked as a team and, and didn't fight. So it makes me just, you know, even more grateful that I had somebody that I could count on and that worked with me and that I knew we weren't going to fight. It also made me a little angry just because of how heartless her children were. I mean, it would make anybody angry. And in fact, it made me think about, I love Twilight Zone. Okay, the original Twilight Zone. When sci-fi does the, um, the New Year's tw um, marathon that they do every year, okay, it, it's my favorite. I have all the episodes, but I watch that anyway. And, and I just love it. And I love it because it, it's old. I mean, I like the time period. I'm familiar with the actors and actresses, but the stories, they're written for a reason. You know, there's lessons in the stories. And I, I really like that. And I really appreciate that. So there's an episode called The Masks. Have you seen it? If you have not seen it, look it up. I feel like it absolutely applies to this story. In the episode, there is an elderly man that is passing and he brings his family in. So his daughter, her husband, and their son and daughter as well. And he knew that they were a lot more concerned about his money than anything else. Well, of course, everything had gone to the daughter. But they all kind of had their own way about them as far as being greedy or whatever it was. And so what he did was he gave them all masks to wear. 
um, was it Mardi Gras? Is that what was happening? Was it, was it Christmas? Mardi Gras? No, Halloween. I've actually forgotten what it was. It doesn't matter. But when they, they had to keep them on, and after he passed, then they could take them off. And what these masks did, because they're awful looking, but what it did was it transformed their faces. And it basically made them look on the outside the way that they were on the inside. And it's just, it's one of my favorite episodes and it absolutely like applies here. Like I feel like I just want to give them masks so that, you know, they can look like they are on the inside. What is your favorite quote or part of the book? Favorite quotes, I actually have more than one. There is, let's see, there's an actual quote by Penelope, and this was just part of it. I was always with grown-ups and treated like an adult. My best friends were my parents' friends. That was just part of something she was saying that I really identified with because when I was growing up, of course, I didn't have any other brothers or sisters. I did have um, a nephew and niece that were not that far apart from me in age, but of course we were separated by state, so there was that. And I was around adults all the time. When I would go up to North Carolina in the summer and when my grandmother had her friends over, well, I wanted to go sit with them. Most kids would be like, oh, this is boring. I'm going to go play. I'm going to go whatever. No, I wanted to go sit with the adults and listen to them, hear what they were saying. So, and then there was another quote. It occurred to her then that people went on living until somebody told you they were dead. Perhaps it was a pity that anybody ever told anybody anything. And I read that and it, I just kind of went, oh, because it's true. I mean, think about it. If at least, obviously not literally, but in our minds, when we don't know any different and so somebody just kind of goes right on and on until somebody tells you. So I, I just thought that, that that was interesting. People went on living until somebody told you they were dead. Aww. And then the other one. Now this one, let me kind of go here to the book. I just, I just want to read kind of some, some bits here. Penelope married early, married young, but she also married before the war and she ended up not really having a happy marriage, but she did find love when her husband was away, but nobody knew about it. Nobody knew about it. She kept it a secret from her children, from her husband, obviously, from everybody. But this is at the end of the book because her daughter did discover a little something. So it starts, but he had been killed, talking about Penelope's love. Only death could have ended such a love. He had been killed and he had never come back to mama. And all his hopes and plans for the future had come to nothing, ended for eternity by some bullet or shell. He had been killed and she had simply carried on, gone back to Ambrose, her husband, and battled through the rest of her life without remorse or bitterness or a trace of self-pity. And her children had never known, nor guessed. Nobody had ever known. Somehow, this seemed saddest of all. You should have talked about him, Mama, told me. I would have understood. I would have wanted to listen. She discovered to her surprise, and this is her daughter, to her surprise that her eyes had filled with tears. These now spilled over and ran down her cheeks, and the sensation was strange and unfamiliar as though it were happening to another person and not herself. And yet she wept for her mother. I want you to be here. Now I want to talk to you. I need you. And it gets me a little emotional just reading it. That kind of got to me. There was, there was a situation with my mom. And I'm not going to, to go into a lot of details. But she had a first husband before, you know, my dad. And while... He did not pass in the Korean War. He might as well have. Something happened, as happened to many men uh, and women, you know, that have been in the service. Something happened that broke him. 
he was a farm boy. He was a country boy. He was not a military man. He was not a fighter. He was not a killer. He was not any of this. And I think he was forced to be things that he was not. And the person that came back was not the person that left. And that person never came back. And Penelope's daughter wishing that she had known, wishing that she had known uh, about this man that, that her mom, you know, had given her some information, you know, talked to her about it, that kind of thing. That's how I feel uh, about mom because I grew up, I knew of him, but I didn't really, I didn't know much about him except what was said. And as I have gone through my mom's things and run across, she, she did a, she put together an entire military book when he went into the military. It was only two years, but it was enough. And looking at pictures and reading letters and everything, I just, it, I remember sitting on the floor and crying. It just absolutely broke my heart. And so when I read that, I just thought, oh, I, I get it because, because I really wished that mom, I understand mom not wanting to talk about it, maybe in general or with anybody else, but it's like, I'm, I'm your daughter, you know, that that's a different kind of relationship. There's a, 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 a confidence there. And, and I just like Penelope's daughter, I just, I wish like hell that I had known more, um, that I had heard it from her. And, you know, and I have to say this book for me was actually really personal for that reason, for the overall storyline, again, ailing parent passing, you know, funeral, well, you know, all that kind of stuff that really hits home. The way that Penelope is uh, in her life, things that she feels, her personality, whatever, I identify very strongly with that. This is it's just, it's a really very personal book for me. From what other character's point of view would you like to read? Some other points of view. We do get some different points of view throughout the story, but there is one at a specific time that it would have been sad, but I feel like it would have been historically accurate to have had in the book too. Penelope's mother, Sophie, had taken a trip to London during the Blitz when all of the bombing was happening. Reading about her experiences and her fears as everything was happening around her and what she saw and all that, I just feel like it would have been very eye-opening. There, there was so much history that Rosamund brought into the book anyway during the wartime and just, you know, the different things that, that people had to contend with. They had rationing over there too, like we've had over here. So there was so much kind of history woven into the story already that I just feel like when Pen when Penelope's mom went to London when all of that was happening, maybe two or three pages on that would have would have been kind of compelling to read. What do you think was the author's purpose in writing the book? I think Rosamund wanted to write a story that everyone could identify with at some point in their lives, but also to create the beautiful life and experiences and such that Penelope had. She is a strong, empowering female character and created way before our uh, current woman's empowerment uh, whole bit started. And she reminds us that it's okay to be different. It's okay to make choices that others don't understand and it's okay to be human. Penelope was in no way judgmental. She was very uh, open and very caring and very accepting. And I think that that's a pretty good role model for all of us. Would you read another book from the same author? Positively, I would. <laughs> um, I've seen excellent reviews for Winter Solstice. So I might have to look for that one. 
little bit about Rosamund because you know me, I can't just stop with the book. I've got to look up stuff and you know get other information. Uh, she was born in 1924. She passed in 2019, so not that long ago. She began writing when she was seven. I can actually identify with that a little bit. I have been writing since elementary school. Uh, and she published her first short story at 18, which that's amazing. She served in the Women's Royal Navy Service in the early 40s before marrying and starting her family. In 2002, a couple years after retiring from writing, she was appointed an officer of the most excellent order of the British Empire. So that's pretty prestigious. Would you recommend it to others and or would you read it again? Yeah, I would absolutely read it again and I would recommend it with one caveat that you haven't recently lost a parent and are still grieving because this book will be a, a little triggering for you if you had. Also, this book was made into a TV movie in 1989, which I did not know this, starring Angela Lansbury as Penelope, which Angela is fantastic. Uh, there was also a stage play in 2005 and a miniseries in 2006. So I did not know that. I thought that was, you know, kind of neat. And so I'm going to look that up on Google and see if that's something that I can watch. All right, y'all. This concludes our brew and review for this time. What are you reading right now? Let me know. Have you read this book? Maybe you've read it and you're familiar with the story. Maybe you have read some other books by Rosamund Pilcher. Let me know. Maybe there's a better one. Like I said, I know I saw Winter Solstice was getting, got a lot of good reviews, but if there's a better one that you think I should read first, let me know and, and I'll try to, I'll try to find that somewhere. Hope you enjoyed this. Again, you see all my little, see, this is what I do. I make all my little notes and things so that I can come back to it. An excellent story. I do encourage you to read it again, as long as you've not just recently lost somebody because that, that might, that might bring up a little bit more emotion than you're ready for at that particular time. As always, time is precious. Carpe diem, seize the day. I'll see you next time.